know there is a lot of uh, information that's coming your way, but make sure that you attend the next session as we are going to talk about esports being the number two Indian sport of the next decade. Is that true? We will find out by our speaker, Vineet Karnik, Business Head Entertainment, Sports and Live Events at Group M. A very warm welcome to you, Mr. Karnik. Thanks, thanks, Khyati. Uh, thanks, Exchange for Media, Nawal uh, Ahuja, uh, in particular, to have uh, put this fantastic uh, forum together. And uh, and what a way to uh, to start a, a fabulous uh, journey in the in the entire available uh, gaming ecosystem that we have. Uh, so great. I mean, absolutely uh, grateful to be here. Thanks a lot for the invite. Uh, let me try and share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Super, okay. great, Kathy. Super. So, uh, thanks again, once again. So, uh, I think uh, the topic is pretty straightforward and and a bit uh, uh, provocative. And I actually wanted to be uh, provocative today because we have been talking about uh, the esports, the gaming landscape, uh, landscape for a while in India. Uh, uh, but now it's the time for us to really scale this up. Uh, and take it to the next level is the is the feeling and, and the sincere uh, uh, point that I wanted to make uh, through this forum. And that's that's the reason why I thought of a very, very provocative uh, uh, topic today saying that can uh, 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 can esports be the number two sports in India? And I have lots of data uh, through the next uh, 10 minutes to support uh, uh, the, the provocation actually uh, and see it directionally uh, which way do we go in terms of uh, data versus reality. Uh, so let's take a deep dive into, into some of the uh, key aspects. So in 2019, Mr. Mukesh Ambani uh, said that gaming will be bigger than music movies. I mean, imagine, I mean, imagine uh, Mr. Ambani making a statement like that is, is absolutely fabulous, isn't it? I mean, that's a great segue into, uh, segue into what we want to eventually achieve uh, in this business. Uh, looking at some of the hard-coded data, uh, we have seen a, a 14x kind of an exponential growth uh, in the Indian online gamers uh, since since 2010. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, uh, so, uh, so a 14x uh, kind of a growth uh, 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 from 2010 onwards. Uh, India uh, is basically, we all know India is ruled by the mobile gaming uh, gamers. I and mean, the numbers on the screen are absolutely uh, sensational to, to talk the least. So we have 250 million mobile gamers in India, uh, looking at 22 hours of time spent weekly viewing esports online. Yeah, 123% growth in prize money in Indian uh, esports in 2000, from 2016 to 2018, 35 million, uh, 35, 5.8 million dollars uh, raised uh, by the esports startups uh, in the last five years. Uh, uh, three, uh, average three number of mobile games uh, on most Indians mobile phones. I mean, that's, that's incredible, isn't it? With 80% India playing a mobile game on a daily basis. We have, all, we have already seen uh, uh, Nazara's IPO uh, are doing extremely well this week itself. Uh, that that itself is a great uh, segue to the to the topic that we have today. Now let's look at what uh, COVID nineteen um, has done in terms of escal uh, acceleration for the for the growth of the gaming industry to us. Uh, Eleven percent increase in esports users per week. Twenty one percent increase in time spent by each user on esports. 61% increase in esports live stream viewership in, in week one of lockdown. 45% yeah? of Indian gamers started playing mobile games during lockdown. 50% spike in daily active users on platforms like Game G during Gamer G during lockdown. I mean, isn't that isn't that an incredible segue? Why do we not believe that with looking at these numbers, that we can't be a very, very competent compare ourselves with a uh, with lot of live action that's happening in the sporting ecosystem uh, around the world and in India. So therefore, uh, 
if you look at it, uh, the the announcement of uh, the Asian Games 22 recognizing esports as a metal sport, okay, itself is a fabulous news for all of us. I think we should take that advantage of the momentum around it uh, at an Asian game level and see how we can create uh, uh, magic around around making it uh, uh, as successful as we all want it to be. So, a couple of booster shots in addition to the uh, uh, Asian Games uh, part in terms of the way we are seeing, uh, me personally and we at Group M are seeing in terms of how will, how can all these things help uh, help uh, grow the entire esports market is by uh, legitimacy. I mean, the entire entire Asian Games initiative and whatever we are talking in terms of federations, in terms of uh, conferences like these, it basically brings legitimacy to the entire entire ecosystem, right? I mean, it brings acceptability as a as a metal sport. Uh, uh, it builds careers. Okay, that's a, that's a very very important point because raising the prize money pool, growing the competitiveness uh, of the entire business, uh, it actually is going to be uh, very very important. We all know that 50% uh, of India is is below uh, below the age of 25. I mean, if you look at it. Uh, India is a young country with an average age of about 26.8 years, and we all know that youth today is driving the esports subculture. And I think we should spend significant time in making sure this uh, is uh, uh, this 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 momentum is maintained uh, for for some time till it becomes a very very established uh, uh, kind of a sector. Yeah. Uh, internet penetration in India, we know arguably, I mean, we have the cheapest wireless internet in the world. Uh, the kind of increasing accessibility is driving the growth in esports participation and consumption. I mean, that that's a no-brainer, right? Imagine the, look at the smartphone penetration. I mean, smartphone market in India is buzzing. I mean, uh, whether it was COVID or lockdown, people were wanting to use various devices, buy those devices. So that's that's that that's one sector which is buzzing with some really, very competitive smartphones uh, access for, for Indians. Uh, gaming and uh, esports start startups. I mean, we, we, I just spoke about Nazara's IPO, right? I mean, the rise, the, the rising number of Indian, uh, Indian startups in the gaming and esports ecosystem is only growing. And, and, and in times to come, I think it's going to explode if, uh, uh, if, if I have to see some of the data points that are available in the, in the public domain. So these, these are some of the booster shots we believe are going to be catapulting the entire industry over time. And a lot of effort from all of us, from a marketing standpoint, from a publishing standpoint, we'll have to, we'll have to come together to make sure this becomes, that this dream becomes a reality at, at some, some stage. Yeah. So, so let's look at eSport uh, and while we're looking, while we're talking about consumer participation and while we're talking about all the numbers in terms of how consumers are embracing uh, uh, data, embracing mobile phones, embracing gaming. Uh, uh, can we can we look at esports as a media product? Okay, that's that's another provocation that I wanted to to uh, do bring to uh, to all your notice. Uh, can esports become a media product and create a platform for itself to look at multiple layers of engagements within the consumer ecosystem within the within the industry ecosystem, within the framework that we all operate in. Yeah? So therefore, one of the examples uh, I thought of, uh, of taking is, and possibly look at a comparison of, of eSports is with, with live action, okay? Uh, so can eSports as a media product, uh, it, it, we all, it, it mimics the traditional sport, right? In, in five ways that I would talk about, okay? Uh, today we have, what's, we have seen significant amount of numbers uh, for for live uh, uh, esports viewing, yeah, uh, esports is unique, yeah. So you look at any live sport in the real world, okay? It's unique to its fans, it's unique to its consumers. It's watched live in the stadia, it's watched live on television sets or on any streaming platforms. I think it's it's common. It's mimicking the tra traditional sports model. It's very seasonal, okay. Most of the most of the sports around the world are seasonal from a timeline perspective, right? There is a fixed timeline, a calendar that operates. So most of the tournaments worldwide and maybe in India also it will take shape, have got a seasonality, have some kind of a calendar attached to it. The narrative itself is is very very uh, very very uh, similar. Okay, so we have all seen the racks to riches story in the entire in the traditional sports ecosystem. We have seen a massive amount of grassroots 
uh, talent coming right from the bottom of the pyramid from from the rural uh, areas to possibly become the poster boys of that country or around the world okay we see a similar uh, uh, sentiment echoing in the entire esports and the gaming ecosystem okay the narrative is very similar to the rags and riches story tomorrow i mean nobody uh, knew some of the top talent uh, from india and around the world uh, some years back but uh, but today because of the entire uh, ecosystem and the streaming platform that are uh, that are showing the esport tournaments live these guys have become stars superstars yeah more importantly we see top quality sport in the traditional ecosystem okay we see the best talent in esports as well competing actually with with uh, their peers either on console either on pcs or or on mobile phones right so i think the these five points are actually mimicking the traditional sport model live unique seasonal narrative and quality in terms of competitiveness it's we are actually headed in the right direction towards making it one of the biggest consumable sporting properties worldwide just to give you some perspective in terms of the numbers uh, from a youtube point of view from march 2020 to january 2021 okay uh, look at a comparison between sports and gaming okay the traditional sports and and the gaming ecosystem monthly av month average monthly views in in the period from march 2020 to jan 2021 742 million for traditional sports against 3338 million for gaming now i understand one of the points that people may have in their mind that sports is normally watched live right uh, but that's the case with with esports as well but today even if you look at this chart as a comparison of content which is driving user uh, user interest okay or a consumer interest it's a great starting point to look at it for the increasing amount of interest the community is showing towards watching videos watching various different of uh, products uh, on gaming on 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 youtube look at the average monthly subscribers okay or uh, to some of the top channels while sports is at 2.8 million uh, gaming is at 20.5 million almost 7.3x uh, of of the live sports uh, economy look at the average monthly downloads okay 8.5 k to 15.6k and that's the reason why i thought of making this more provocative in terms of can e sports be the number sports for india in time to come we spoke about we spoke about uh, the talent who's young uh, the whole whole philosophy is around catch them young and watch them grow it's a very very age old theory and i think i think it's uh, it's very very relevant to the esports ecosystem as well so let's look at some of the some of the advertisers worldwide who have who have caught the entire frenzy on esports quite early we have seen significant amount of investors from dell coca cola uh, mtv acer louis vuitton airtel red bull intel worldwide we have seen we are seeing similar sentiments on some of these advertisers on the chart in india as well people they have taken positions in india already okay so the whole whole philosophy the whole theory that i want to bring to the table is you need to ride the esports bride wagon very very early for you to reap benefits today is the time for you to evaluate various different opportunities and how can one relate to this target audience of the guys who are playing the esport and embracing this medium uh, uh going forward and look at building your brand affinity with them over time so if you look at if you can what's on offer uh the key stakeholders uh in this ecosystem being the streaming platforms uh the game publishers teams uh, which are created uh through various different individual uh, talent pool talent themselves uh as one of those influencers or endorsers the way you want to look at it and of course the esport tournaments or oh, if you look at this five buckets they are actually addressing multiple problems from a advertising from a marketing perspective okay you can look at these five buckets from a endorsement standpoint you can look at these buckets from a, from a sponsorship standpoint from programmatic advertising standpoint from an exclusive content and so this is what it delivers to the marketing community to the advertising community to the media community okay now, now look at it from a from a point of view of programmatic advertising 
uh, which is a pipe through the digital ecosystem. Yeah, collaborative content uh, is something which drives a lot of eyeballs, and we have seen the numbers um, on the previous slide in terms of the kind of downloads and the kind of time spent uh, people are doing on YouTube. A serious amount of money is also being uh, uh, channelized through the in-game advertising ecosystem, uh, streaming integration, experiential marketing. Now, these are all important facets of our everyday life in the media, marketing, and advertising industry. Can we look at gaming with the same lens, the way we have looked at sports in the last two decades is the provocation that I wanted to possibly uh, uh, set, set on this platform. Okay? Therefore, I, 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 I remind of one of the phrases that the future is already here. It's just not very evenly distributed at this point in time. And this beautiful quote comes from William Gibson, uh, who I have tremendous admiration for. Now, I mean, look at it. The future is all set. The data is all there. We are all seeing the momentum. We are all seeing the seeing the kind of uh, conversations on various different platforms in the right, right direction. Can we, can we now embrace this as a business opportunity? Can we now embrace this as an industry in India and just take, take off from here and, and, and look at scaling the entire uh, product offering on, in the gaming and esports ecosystem? So on that provocative note, I wanted to thank you all for, uh, for giving me this opportunity to or share my thoughts on this platform. Uh, and thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Karnik. Uh, it was a wonderful session. We'd love to hear more from you. And I want to ask all our audiences, what is your take on this? Will esports become the number two sports in India? We know through statistics that India has taken 13% stake in the overall global esports category. We are expected to reach $2.8 billion by 2022, and we have the youngest uh, crowd in our country. So there is all, all the elements that require this industry to boom is already here with us in our country. So let us know what you think about it. We'd love to know and uh, join our online conversation using the hashtag E4M Game On. We'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Thank you so much, Mr. Karnik, once again.